Is your password terrible? Right? Do you have a hard time coming up with good passwords? And you just keep adding the number one to the end, things like that. Yeah, we all struggle with that, right? So here at Power Apps 911, we have accounts to a lot of our different customer tenants, and we always have to make up a new complex password for that. So Anthony from the team got tired of having to make up hard passwords, so he built a password generator here in Power Apps. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through how we did it. Like the code to make this work is way more complicated than you think. And so we're going to look at how we built it with collections and the character function and sequence and for all and variables and all types of fun stuff. Just go through his logic and then we'll add my flair to it, right? I can't look at hard code like his and not do my own version or, you know, add some additional complexity. So that sounds like fun. Then let's switch over to my desktop. And hey, look, here we are in the app. And so let's just go ahead and hit play and let's just make sure it works, right? So what he's given us so far is the ability to choose a number of characters. So if we go down here and say, I want like a 10 pa character password, it automatically updates. And okay, I also want to include uppercase and special and numbers. And then now we'll change it up here to 11, 12, whatever. Like we start to see that all those pieces come in there. So very cool. It's showing it here, and then you can go ahead and hit the copy. This will copy it to your clipboard, right? A little, little notification up here that it happened, and bingo, bingo, we can now use that complicated password. So how do we do this? Okay, so what Anthony did is, you know, like, once again, if you land an app, you're like, all right, how did he do this? So the first thing I did is I went to here, and I was like, I know when I changed the number on the slider, it triggered, so I bet if I click on the slider and look on change, there you go. So he is selecting button generate underscore action. So select means trigger that button. So it looks like he put all of his code into one button. So then we need to go find over here, button generate action. And if we click in there, now we get all of the fun that he gave us, okay? So let's see if we can figure out what's going on. So first he clears the collection, all right? And then he says, hey, if uh, combo, or I guess that's checkbox, lowercase is checked, right? So lowercase checked. It looks like he had this one disabled, so it's always checked. So if that's true, then he's going to collect call value. So create that collection that we just cleared out. And he's going to concatenate into it lowercase character letter, right? So this took me a minute to think about, like, what is this? Um, like, I, like, what did he do? But I know that concat takes a table, so I know somewhere he's made a table called lowercase character. And if we look in there, it is all the letters, A through Z. I know, shocking, right? So how did that get defined? Um, so knowing Anthony, right, he's one of the architects here at SharePoint 911. My first guess was I went here to app and I didn't go to on start because that is, you know, a good place to put things if you truly need it to happen and you like want to be in more control. But in this case, he just needs that collection used when it needs. So I guessed that he put it in formulas and I was right. All right? So good job, Anthony, putting it where I thought you would. So it looks like he's making a table called lowercase character and he is taking a sequence of 26 characters, right? So sequence one, two, three, four, five, six, 26, right? So make a table with 26 rows. He's starting at 97 though. And then he's just going to increment by one. So what that's going to do is that's going to basically go 97, 98, 99, 100 all the way through whatever 126 is like 23, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay. He's going to then add a column to that table called letter. And in there, he's going to use the car function, the char function, right? We've talked about this one a couple different times. This one takes a character code, an ASCII character code, and turns it into that character. So really, instead of hard coding A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? He didn't want to type all that out. He used this function. And so this is what produces our table of the 26 lowercase characters because they start at char 97 and go through whatever I just said, 122, 123. So if he does an uppercase table, same exact logic, except this time he starts at 65. So uppercase characters in the ASCII table come before lower. And I'll put one of those on the screen or I probably already did so that you guys can kind of see what I'm saying here. But so that's how I made those two tables. For numbers, he did the same thing. Looks like numbers start at uh, 48. So he did, you know, um, right, you had to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then for special characters, he didn't know which, which ones he would want there. So he just went ahead and he did hard code that into a single column table, right? So this is how he made the four tables of the data sets. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, I want my, I want a uh, space to be one of my special characters, or I want a tilde to be one of my special characters, right? Like just come at it here. 
Okay. So that's how he got those tables. So back to our button generate. So he's basically just saying, hey, if they've checked lower, which if they have to, because we can't, it's disabled. Um, so then he is just taking everything that was in that lowercase character in that letter column and putting it in there, right? So that's why when we looked at this table, right? There's 97, 98, 99, 100, like we said, A, B, C, D. So he's just taking this letter column and putting it in there. And that's why if we look at cold values, there's a row with A, B, C, D all the way through Z. Okay. So that's making that row. Then it said, hey, if uppercase is checked, right? We got all of them checked. He's doing the same thing for uppercase characters. And if we look at that one, just to show you here, right? That's the table. Look, there's that starting at 65, like we talked about in a capital A. And then for the special characters, um, he did the same thing. And so then that's why, right? We had special characters. That table just had a value column, right? Like remember this one had a letter column. This one just used the value column because of the way that he wrote that formula. The square brackets just made a single column called value. So that's why you see all his special characters here. And then finally for numbers, he put that in, right? So at this point, if we look at cold values, right? It's just got four rows with all of our info available, okay? So then he said, all right, now what I wanna do is I wanna create a variable, right? Update context, create a variable called full string and it concatenated everything that was in cold values, the value column. So if we look at full string, it is literally going to be a, B, Z, like look at that. It's just every one of those pieces of data into one giant long string. Okay, so he has a variable called full string with that. Then what he did was he said, all right, I want to uh, create a new collection, so clear collect, called full string, right? So full string the variable and then full string the collection, two separate pieces. And he just split full string on nothing. So then he turned all those crammed together characters into just a giant table with all of that stuff in it, right? Everything that we just talked about is down here in cold full string, okay? So now he's got a giant table with that. And then here you're like, all right, clear collect, cold select, password string. So he's creating another collection. He's doing an add columns. He's using the sequence function to create a table that is the length of this. So since this is 13, it's going to have a table with 13 columns for every, um, row in that table, he's going to add a column called character. And in there, what he's going to do is he's going to do the index function of cold full string ran between one and that 13 or no, uh, one and the number of characters in there, which, which we figure is like 52, 62. It's about 70 characters, right? I guess we could probably ask it. Tell me. 75 characters. So one through 75. So in, this is its way of just saying, okay, I got 75 rows pick out row randomly between row one and 75 and take whatever's in the value column and put it into this collection called selected password string, right? So then now if you look at this collection, the value column is just one to 13 because of 13 rows, but then it's got character F, P, 2, R, U, percent sign, D, Q. So we just built all that back up into a table. And then finally he's gonna say, hey, the password is concatenate that collection on the character and so then the password variable, right? That's the name of the variable, right? And so then there's the password, right? It took me a second to get that selected, but that's the same password you're seeing here, right? That, that control right there is just showing us the password. So that's how Anthony did this, right? Like when you see it and I walk you through it, you're like, oh, that, that makes perfect sense. Why don't you say it's complicated, Shane? I can tell you, I had to stare at this thing for like 15 minutes the first time to figure out what he had done. Um, like these are the type of problems when we solve them, they look super easy, but figuring that out to begin with, kind of tricky, but not too bad. Um, you could also be looking at this code and be like, I think I could do this in less steps. You can. So that would be a fun takeaway for you, right? Grab all this code and then go figure out how to do it, right? Like figure out how to optimize this. I can think of a whole bunch of ways. I'm going to show you a couple in a second. But there's a lot that you could do to make this tighter. But Anthony was trying to solve the problem, right? He wasn't trying to optimize for performance. He's trying to optimize for easy to read, easy to build, right? Like he literally made this and I stole it from him five seconds later. So he didn't didn't try to optimize it. Okay, and speaking of, if you wanna steal the code, right? Just go over to training.powerapps911.com, sign up for our YouTube library. You can download this app and a bunch of other demo apps I built. 
You also get a monthly invite to office hours. You get to spend an hour a week or a month, not a week, a month, asking me questions, um, you know, getting your questions solved, hearing how other people get their questions solved. We just have this live office hours that tied to that. So go check out the YouTube library on training.powerapps911.com. Okay, so now we understand that. Like the UI is pretty straightforward, right? This is a slider. This is just a label showing what's in the slider. Um, he just made this a text input that's showing you that password variable. This little copy icon is using the copy function. Hopefully you knew that there was a copy function in Power Apps. It copies uh, whatever you pass it. So in this case, that password to your clipboard. And then we did a notify uh, here just to tell them that it had been put in their password successfully or in their clipboard successfully, whatever, you know what I mean, all right? And then these are all just uh, checkboxes. And so like the lowercase one here, you know, and so when they check it, uh, right, so checked is true. So that is its default value, so it's always checked, right? And then you set the display mode to, dis uh, to view, not disabled, view, so then that way you can't change it. So he's basically saying you always have to have lower characters. If you don't like that, right, you can just change the display mode back to edit, if I can spell the word edit, and now it'd be, it would work, right? But we're gonna leave it the way Anthony did it, because this is his app I keep playing with. Um, and then the other thing he has is there is a on, um, on, well, I guess for him, it's not gonna be here, but on select, right, let's go to, let's go to uppercase. This one will make more sense, right? So on select of uppercase, then he is pressing that button again, right? So every time that they change the state, he's pressing the button again, and that's what's then causing all of that to get updated, okay? So that's how we avoided writing that code over and over and over again, putting in all these checkboxes. He just has all these checkboxes call the code, okay? There you go. He built it in containers. He made it look, you know, nice. He used modern controls to make it uh, easier to make it look nice. Like I want to make it bigger now. I also think I want to make it a mobile app. But so that was that was kind of Anthony's. So um, also the button, just so you know, is on the screen. It's just hidden, right? So we do display you know, the visible. It's, it shows up down here in the corner. So he just kind of put it down there. Now I couldn't look at his code and not do something, right? I, I get all these ideas when I look at other people's code, especially hard code that made me think for a minute. So I immediately started thinking, all right, what else could I do? So let's set visible for true for the one I built. So the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to have characters to exclude. Let's, can I just pull this whole thing up? Let's see. You ever notice that like containers are kind of hard to like move? Oh, I feel like they are. Okay, so I put a text input here. So if I go, you know what? I don't want to have any A's or X's or fours or exclamation points in my password, right? So how would I implement that? So what I needed to do here is, you know, I kind of took his base code and then down here, uh, I want to kind of jump around for a second, but I said, all right, I want to do a split of his, of whatever's in there, right? So I, I do make my users, make them comma separate, but I wanna split AX4 and whatever, right? That that takes that string and turns it into a table, right? Right here, it tells you a table with just those four characters on their own line. So I turn that in a table, I wanna loop through that. And so then I'm gonna look at the cold full string and I'm just gonna do a remove and I'm gonna look up where cold full string value is the data value. So this is just going to loop its way through and grab out all of the ones and remove them from our, our collection, right? So cold full string, if you look right now, like it has an A and a capital A because we haven't ran it, okay? So if I press this Shane button, boop, like I didn't have it auto trigger. Oh, I gotta move the password over here. So then now if we look at that collection of cold full string, we're gonna see that Right here, look, the capital A is missing. And whatever other characters I did, I've already forgotten what characters I did. Not shocking, right? So A, X, 4, and exclamation point, all of those have been removed from uh, the, the set, right? Let's go find the four. I think I can do numbers. Yep, so there you go, four is missing. And the exclamation point's not in there, right? Um, so that's how I did that, right? Because I understood it was in a table. I'm kind of how to manipulate tables. So I just took and built on his code. Um, I also wanted to optimize, right? So up here at the top, I have his four if statements. I didn't mess with those uh, in my playing. But so here I was like, all right, can I make this go faster? So 
update context, full string, I can cat it all that, right? So that creates that same, same one we had before, just all of those in one big character. So I said clear collect col full string, split it on that. So that's the same thing that Anthony had as well, right? So that's what gives me the full table. And then we did my extraction. And then down here, this is where I kind of um, optimized his and made it a little bit fancier. So I also didn't want to have any repeat characters. So what I did was instead of what he, the way that he did that whole index thing, I said, take that collection, right, of all of that stuff, do a shuffle on it, right? So shuffle takes the table and just puts everything in different orders, right? So you can see B, N, 1, F, right? So shuffle that and then grab out, grab the first number row. So first in, so first would get just the first row. First in gets a table with all the rows that you told it. So first in, and in this case, whatever was in the slider, which I think was like 13. So get the first 13 rows and then do a concat. Oh, it's right here, right? There's a slider, there you go. So get the first, yep, 13, that's right. My nose really itches, it's driving me crazy. Um, and so then we concatenated that table for the value. And so that's why var no repeats, not only, like, I just took what he did and I just condensed it into a bunch of steps. It's a lot easier to write that really condensed code after he did all the hard work and broke it out all into separate pieces. I just started smushing them up. That's not the only way to do it, but that was one of the ways, right? Remember, he used the whole RAND, the index. So once again, I kind of challenge you guys, okay? grab this code and figure out some other cool things. You know, other things that you might want to do, if I was thinking through this, maybe you want to always exclude ones and L and lower cases L's, right? Because they look alike, right? Like you could go back and O's and zeros. So you could just go here and before you do this one that excludes the characters they chose, you could add a line here that just did that same remove and said remove the O, the capital O, the lowercase uh, or the zero, all those things, right? So you could build that into it. Other ideas I had that I haven't built that I think you guys, once again, I'd love to see you go play with this is what if we said every time they generate a password, we throw that in a collection and we had a gallery of all the passwords that have been generated recently over on the other side. So then that way, maybe you generate four or five and then you choose one, right? We're still, we don't have a data source. We're not saving any of this. It's just there. Um, on that pop-up notification, you could remind them to clear out their clipboard after they copy and paste in that password. Um, if you wanted to make sure that the password, like these passwords aren't gonna include like my username or anything like that but you could look at the password and filter out, you know, or, or invalidate the password if Shane was in there, or maybe they get to add their own, maybe you add seed phrases, all types of fun stuff you can do. So anyway, I thought this was a fun little brain twisting uh, exercise. We've actually been asked for this app a few times and I just, I, like first request was like six years ago. So I finally made the video thanks to Anthony making the app, so cool. Questions, comments, leave them below. Um, yeah, love to hear what you're thinking there, you know, what else we can go, got going on. And remember, we do projects like this came out of a project for a customer. We can do your project. Is there anything we can help you with? Just shoot us a note, right? Get us over at powerapps91.com. Leave us a note. Email me, shane at powerapps91.com. Say help. I'll happily help. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.